Alright, let's talk about the electron transport chain. And if you remember back to the last video, we said the Krebs cycle and glycolysis produced about 10 NADHs and 2 FADHs. We're going to talk about how we can use NADH and FADH to generate ATP indirectly. So we have oil rig. I just want to go back over oxidation reduction. Oxidation. In case you didn't see the, the previous video, at least you'll have a basic idea of what I'm talking about when I talk about um, oxidation is losing electrons. And reduction is gaining electrons. And so, if you were thinking about this from a biological standpoint, sometimes you would think oxidation is losing hydrogens and reduction is gaining hydrogens. But for, for right now, let's just think of oxidation as losing electrons and reduction is gaining electrons. That will definitely help you understand why we're going from a high energy state to a low energy state. So let's start off with NADH and we're going to talk about the oxidation of NADH. Oops. should be H. Oxidation of NADH. 2 NAD plus. That's going to leave us also with some hydrogen protons and two electrons. And so we're taking this high energy state here. So this is high energy. We're trying to get it down to a lower energy state. And in that process, we're going to release energy. So coenzyme Q and we're going to have an energy release here so energy is released we're going to go to cytochrome C so cytochrome C here we're going to have an energy release and we're going to take that down and we'll have two electrons plus two hydrogen protons plus one oxygen I'm saying one half because we've got O2 here and that's going to lead to the reduction of oxygen to water so let me draw in water there so this is the reduction of oxygen to water And this is going to be our low energy state. So throughout this process, we went from a high energy state and slowly got to a lower energy state each time. And there are a lot of steps that were left out here, but each time we released some energy along the way. So now let me describe why we want that energy. What are we using that energy for? So let me draw out mitochondria here Oops. so that's the outer membrane there of the mitochondria draw the inner membrane of the mitochondria and you might remember that mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell and this is going to make sense after we explain this because you'll see how we get ATP we get a lot of ATP from the electron transport chain so that's the inner membrane and then this inside here is going to be matrix. So let's look at this at a closer cross section here. I'm going to cut that off and let's draw that out so that you can kind of see what's going on. This is going to be the outer membrane. Let me draw the inner membrane. So this is inner. And we're going to have some protein complexes that span the distance 
between the inner and outer membrane because those are going to be used to help pump out hydrogen. So we're going to pump out some hydrogen protons. So we get some hydrogen being pumped out here. You might ask, well, how's it getting pumped out? Well, that's the energy we were referring to up here. We're using this energy. We're taking this NADH from a high energy state down to a low energy state, and that energy being released is helping pump these hydrogens out, and that's making this more positive. And then this is the matrix down here is a little bit more negative. It's making an electrical gradient between the two, so now the hydrogens want to get back across. This is also becoming more acidic because anytime you have a buildup of hydrogen protons, it's going to get more acidic, and this is more basic here. So now these hydrogens want to get back across. Well, these protein complexes allowed them to go this way, but they can't get back through this membrane. So they're going to need another type of protein complex. And let me draw that out here. So here's the inner membrane space here. And here's our protein complex. And it's got an axle that runs through it. And then it's got a little spindle down here at the bottom. And this will make sense in just a second. So this is inner membrane. This is that inner membrane that those hydrogens can't go back across, and they're stuck out here on the outer membrane. They want back in. So the only way for them to get back in is another protein complex. And this protein complex is called ATPase, and that's the same protein complex that we talked about when we talked about the ATP-CP system and ATP ACE was used to bond that phosphate back on ADP and that's exactly what we're going to talk about here. Well these hydrogens can't get across that membrane and they can't use these other protein complexes to get back across so what they do is they use ATP ACE and they come right down through here to get through and in the process they help spin this axle so you can think of this kind of like a wind or water turbine so as these hydrogens come through, they create this spinning. What that spinning does for us, have ADP right there, so that's adenosine two phosphates, and there's another phosphate here. So as it spins, it helps bind this phosphate back, and then that's going to create our ATP. So that's how NADH helps create ATP indirectly. So let's go back over this real quick so that we can have it make sense. We started off with our NADHs or FADHs and then we're going to oxidize NADH from a high energy state to a low energy state. <clears throat> That's going to produce energy. That energy is used in the mitochondria which are the powerhouses of the cell to pump these hydrogens across. Well these hydrogens want to get back into the matrix but the only way to do that is to use another protein complex which is ATPase and so they come through and they flow through and as they flow through they cause it to spin <clears throat> and as they cause it to spin they help bind ADP back to another phosphate group creating ATP so that's how the electron transport chain works let's kinda sum all this up so that you can kinda see the big picture so we know from glycolysis so glycolysis we netted two ATP from the Krebs cycle we also got two ATP and we know from the electron transport chain We've got two NADHs, and for each NADH, we have three ATPs being produced, so that's three times 10, so we're going to get 30 there from the NADHs. And then we're going to get, for every FAD, you get two ATPs, so that's going to give us four more ATPs down here. And so when we add all that up, that's going to give us 38 ATP 
if the cell is running efficiently. So it has to be running efficiently in order to get these 38 ATPs. In most cases, you're getting 29 to 30, but this is best case scenario here. So two from ATP, or two from glycolysis, two from the Krebs cycle, 30 from the NADHs, and four from the FADHs. So this is how the electron transport electron transport chain works. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.